Hi, my name is Mike Bayo with Bangert. Today's topic, we're going to cover how to process electronic ACH payments in Sage 300 CRE for accounts payable. We're going to go in and configure your vendor's bank accounts. We're going to make sure your checking account has the information filled that it needs. And then we'll go through and um, select a bill for payment and take you through the process of generating the actual ACH file. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into Accounts Payable in Sage 300, and we're gonna go into the settings in Accounts Payable under Company Settings, or excuse me, under File, Company Settings, AP Settings. Inside here, you do have the ability in the Distribution Settings to select which fields show up during your Accounts Payable invoice entry. So if we go into Invoice Settings, and we go down to Distribution Settings, one field that may be helpful for you to have during uh, entry, especially if um, sometimes the, you know, you're generating ACH files not on every bill but only certain bills, is down in the distributions here, you'll see at the very end, there's a field called default payment type. And you can make this available for all your vendor types or for whichever specific vendor type um, that you will be setting up to receive ACH payments. Um, for example, some people actually will use one of the types and maybe rename it, call it electronic, um, you know, whatever. And then you can actually just turn on this field down here, default payment type for that vendor. So what we're going to do is just we're going to make it simple here. We're going to turn them on for all of them. So now this field is going to be available during uh, AP invoice entry. And we'll take a look at that uh, a little bit later in the process. So we're going to make sure these are turned on. We're going to click OK. And I'm going to save this, these settings and we'll click OK. Now, once that has been turned on, the next thing you want to do is prepare your vendor um, that is going to receive those ACH payments. So in the vendor setup, under Setup Vendors in Accounts Payable, you're going to pull up the vendor vendors that um, you want to make sure has the information set up for the ACH payments. And we'll use A1 Electric in this example. And I'm going to enter down here. And if I go down to the uh, Terms and Defaults tab, you'll notice one thing, uh, one setting you could switch is a payment type, a default payment type. So if this vendor, majority of the time, is going to be an ACH or electronic payment vendor, you can switch the type here to electronic. Okay, or if the majority of the time they're, you know, you're going to write a check for them and you want to make the payment type on a check, you can do that. But let's do electronic here. Okay. And then what I can do now is on the next tab, you're going to notice there is a payment settings tab, which is that shouldn't be anything different here. But in the electronic payment settings tab, this is where you can go ahead and fill in that vendor's bank routing information, bank account information, just like you would a direct deposit um, in the payroll side if you're doing that as well for this particular vendor. So this is where it's gonna pull that vendor's banking information for the ACH payment. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure this is filled out here for routing and accounting and you know what type it is um, and so forth. So we'll go ahead and uh, click save and that vendor looks good to go. So the next step you wanna do is to make sure that your bank account um, where the funds are coming from has the information that is needed for the ACH file as well. So if you're using, uh, you know, for example, if you're using direct deposits in payroll, chances are your bank um, might already have the information it needs. But just to be sure, you should go over to cash management and go right into the bank account setup, which is under setup bank accounts. And it gets the bank account number from directly in the contact tab here in the bank account record. So if I pull up the bank that I'm looking to make ACH payments with, first specific bank, I'm gonna to go to the contact tab and you'll see here's where the account number is stored. The routing number is gonna be stored um, in the generate uh, electronic payments section in accounts payable that we'll take a look at uh, next. So the only thing you're gonna to need to fill in here is the account number and the bank name. Those are two fields that are required here on your company's bank account. So those are filled out and we'll click close. 
Okay, so now we can go over to accounts payable. We have the uh, settings set up that we need in the system. Um, where we're gonna put that routing information for your bank account is under TAS, generate electronic payments. So if I go into here, you'll notice inside here, there is a place to click on options. So in the options here, you'll notice it's gonna pull the defaults in. Um, this is typical of the ACH. Most of the time it's federal ID, the origin name, and there's the federal ID. And it's actually should all pull in um, during your setup, but this is done in the general ledger company setup um, for, your, for your federal ID over in there. And then you'll notice here the destination is my bank. Where am I getting the information from? And there, right here, is where we need to put in the routing number. Okay, and with the ACH files, the only big decision that usually needs to be made is does your bank uh, require a balanced or unbalanced file? So by default, you'll notice this is not checked here. So this means this is gonna be a balanced file. And if your bank required what's called an unbalanced file, and you could just ask them, they should be able to tell you, uh, you just check that box, okay? There is help on this system, on this process as well. If you click the help button here, it does go through a whole section here on how to generate electronic payments. So you can use this as well for references. This is what we're going through now. So that's available to you as well. So for now, we're not ready to generate. So I just wanna get out of here and we'll take a step back. But uh, at this point right now, this looks good to go. And it can be added um, on the fly when you're going to generate your first, your first payment, which we'll come back into. So first things first, let's go in and just put a bill in the system. And we'll take a look at that field that we added earlier. So I'm gonna go into task, enter invoices. And let's pull that A1 electric company up. I have some compliance warnings that came up on my other screen. I'm gonna ignore them. And I'm just gonna put an invoice number in. And this, my sample data is in a prior year. So I wanna make sure I fill out the right information. Say so it's $450 and we'll make sure it's 0530-2015. Okay, so now you'll notice when I get down to the second, the distribution sec section, you'll notice there's that field that we added. What is the payment type for this, this bill? Now it defaulted to electronic because we changed that in the vendor setup. So, you know, you could do your normal coding of your invoices in 300. You can put, you can code it through a purchase order, a job, um, you know, that nothing, none, nothing changes here as far as that's concerned. I'm just gonna skip it because nothing does change here. And we'll let the GL account pre-fill in and we'll just let it pre-fill across here. So, you know, I could select whether this is electronic payment or a check payment, it's electronic. And then you can continue to code as normal. So I'm gonna accept it accept the invoice and then I could do another invoice if I needed to. Okay, we'll just click finish and then you're gonna get your typical printout which I'm printing to files. We'll click start and we'll let that post into the system. Okay, so now I have a um, bill in the system here. Now as far as um, how you want to go about selecting what bills to pay electronically, you could do it a couple different ways. Uh, you could follow your normal on-screen or automatic select invoices to pay just like you would for a normal check run. Um, you can go into here and select it. You can also go right in to generate electronic payments, especially if you're just doing one and you'll notice you have an override. So maybe somebody's doing a check run and you don't wanna mess up there what they've already selected to pay. So what I like to do is come into here, I'm doing one ACH payment. So I'm gonna come into here and say, what bank account is it for? And what form do we use? And then I have an effective date. So we're gonna, we're gonna generate this effective date as of, uh, I'm gonna say 5.30 just in case. Okay, now what it's gonna want here is it wants an electronic payment path because it's actually gonna create the ACH file to a text file. So it wants to know right here, where do you want me to save that file? So put it, obviously save it somewhere that's secure 
and somewhere that you have access to and can retrieve it afterwards to upload to your bank. So I'm going to click list, which is the browse. And we'll come into here and we're just going to put it. Um, I'm going to put it right in the uh, let's see. I'm going to put it right in my desktop today just so we can get to it easy enough. And we'll call it AP electronic sample. Now you could just most people will just date it. Uh, ACH and maybe the day or something like that. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's say ACH. Um, we're pretending it's 30. So we'll do it like that. Okay, so it really doesn't matter the naming structure, only to the point that you can remember what you called it and go grab it. So it should save as a text file. You'll click save. And now there's the path where it's saving to. So now what you can do here is I can just say override payment selection. So if there's already selections in process, it's not going to change anything for anybody else. So I'm going to click override. And now I could range and do some filtering here, but I know the vendor is A1. So I'm just going to range A1. And I'm going to click start because I want to I want to take a look at it. And let's see if we can see the one that we put in a second ago here which is right there, I believe. Yep, there's the one I put in right here, 450. I'm gonna double click on it, and it's gonna select it for payment. Click OK. Okay, and now it should be ready to go to the next step. So again, I would just make sure you double check and you know take a look at your options file, make sure your routing number's in there. You've, you've labeled the path already to where the file is gonna to save to. And now, as far as output, what the system's going to uh, provide you during this process is two forms. It's going to provide you an actual, um, the ability to generate or print out notification stubs. Um, you could print those out. You could print those to file and email them to the vendors. Um, you know, you can do whatever you want for them. But by default, what it's going to do is it's going to print... Um, the notifications to your printer. Now I have the PDF printer turned on here, so mine's gonna go to PDF. And it's gonna print a report. It's gonna print a recap report, just like all other areas in the system where it prints a check report or a posting report. This automatically defaults to print to file. And I have my file naming convention turned on, so it's gonna print it to file automatically for me. If I didn't have my naming convention, it would then ask me to name the file. So in this case, it already knows what to name it to. And for my notifications, it's going to uh, print to PDF. I am going to change this so we can all see it. I'm going to print this to file two. And then I'll, I'll label it afterwards. So if you did have forms, notification forms, just like your direct deposits, you could put those in the printer. Um, and these notification reports can be modified as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click Start. And when I do that, it's going to ask me to name that notification file because I said print it to file. So I'm going to call it notifications. And I'm going to change it. I want it to be a PDF file because I want to be able to see it outside the system. So I'm going to make it a PDF file. Or maybe I want to email it to the vendor afterwards. I'm going to click save. And once I do that, now it's going to start the process. It's going to say, okay, you know, I'm going to fit that stub on this size paper. That's okay. And I'm going to go ahead and generate. So we'll go ahead and watch the background task here. And it happened before I could get it to my other screen. It's completed normally. So if I go and take a look at my file printouts, and I go take a look at my folder structure, my naming convention is by module, accounts payable. And you'll notice there it is. I generate electronic payments. There's my printout. So this is my report. So here it's showing me that I generated one for this bank account. There's my general ledger entry and my general ledger posting and should be good to go there. So that worked correctly. Now I can actually um, take a look at my stubs or my notifications. I believe I saved those to the desktop as well, but I can't remember now, so we're gonna take a look. Oh, uh, it's a PDF file. Remember, I saved it to a PDF file. Yep. And that is not the notification report. I think I saved that to the database. So let's take a look at that. File printouts. And let's change it to a PDF. 
There it is. Notifications. So let's open that up, take a look at it. So this is how the notification is going to print by default. It should look identical to your check form that you're using in Sage 300. You can also get notifications that um, send out and fit on the form as well. Or you can also de design a different check form in accounts payable uh, for, for a notification. So this is what that prints out there. And the other thing you have the ability to do is in reports and accounts payable under forms, you can also generate an electronic payment notification, which is a little, little fancier, looks a little nicer. And this is something you can email out to your vendor as well. Um, so let me see here. What was my reference number? Let's just do a print preview on that just so you can see what it's gonna look like. This will be blank, but. So once this is generated now, um, yeah, so there's what the electronic fund notification looks like. So here's the one we did today. So this looks a little nicer. Sometimes people like to generate this out and send it to the vendors this way as well. And this is a crystal report, so it can be modified. So now basically you have this, um, you have this uh, ACH file and that we did save to the desktop. So if I go to my desktop, and switch it to a text file, because remember we saved it as a text file. You should see it right there. So there it is, ACH053. So it'll say .txt, you wanna make sure you change it to text file. And you can most certainly just browse this, either your email or your Windows Explorer, because um, you know, you're know you either gonna have to, you need to check with your bank, but either you're gonna um, email this text file over to your bank, uh, one of your contacts there, or most of the time inside there, banking software, they have a um, upload portal where you can upload this file right in and confirm it. So if I'll just open this up real quick, it looks just like the you know, ACH, um, NACHA file, uh, bank standard file. Uh, it shouldn't be any different here. Um, and this is how we want it to look. So all you basically have to do at this point is upload that file to the bank. The system has already recorded that as a payment. You'll be able to do a bank reconciliation on it. Um, if you're generating a, uh, you know, direct deposit, you can do it to also to multiple vendors. Um, it'll send one file just like it would for one uh, employee and, and take it out, uh, you know, that way as well. It's, it's very simple. It's very straightforward, very easy to use. So it is in the system that it's already built in. It, it's something that's been there for a while now. So if you haven't been using it and uh, vendors are asking for electronic payments, uh, give it a shot, set it up. Uh, if you have any questions or you need any assistance, please let us know, comment, or uh, send a, a question into help at bangerninc.com. But that completes the process for generating ACH payments through accounts payable with Sage 300. Thank you very much, have a good day.